Oh, happy Monday, everyone. It has been such an awesome weekend coming off of all of the announcements that Beachbody gave us over the weekend. I am not going to dive into them here because I feel like they've been floating around the TBB page and your back office and probably your team pages too. But just a little PSA, if you have not yet caught up on all of the announcements that were shared over the weekend with our super virtual weekend event, go ahead, listen to that, take note. Right now, there isn't anything, but in the next couple weeks, we're going into BOD groups. We're gonna be getting into um, some new flavors and there's so much stuff. So watch it, take note of it, and hype up your customers and your, um, the, your team too, so that they know. I think um, above anything else, it was such a great reminder of all the things that our company's doing. But one thing I do wanna highlight here, and I didn't pull the image up, but. I um, wrote some of this stuff down. When Carl was talking, he went on to share some really impressive stats. And I think it's really important for us to understand that these stats have so much power in where our company is going and what people need right now. And he shared on the call that there were 18 million workouts that were streamed in the last week. But if you listen to the National Wake Up Call, he actually said it's now up to 20 million, not week, in the last month. 20 million workouts have been streamed through Beachbody on demand in a month, which is insane and a direct reflection of the number of people who are joining us. There were 440,000 BOD subscribers. Um, and already through the halfway point in April, there were 40,000 challenge packs sold. And at a comparison level, that is, there were 45 all month long in March. So people are joining. It's evidenced by the team shout outs. I don't know how many of you guys have seen um, what Melanie shared in the dream team this morning. I didn't get to save the images down, but I am gonna do a quick screen share just to recognize some really impressive numbers that I saw coming out. So it's gonna be messy because they're not saved in my, um, in my, they're not saved not on my computer, but let me see if I can, it's my giant eagle grocery list there. Okay. So this one here, this was our top recruiter list. If you pay attention in the um, shout out boards every month or every week uh, on Mondays, I know Melanie puts hers out. Um, I actually just started doing um, recruiters in my team page as well. And usually this list has, you know, maybe three, four, five people on it. Usually anybody who's had four or more coaches is included on the list. And then I didn't even count them, but you can visually look and see that a heck of a lot of people have joined the team in the last week. So this is number of coaches, shout out to Janelle, who you'll be hearing from here shortly on the call. Um, and just look at these numbers. Like guys, if you're sitting there thinking, nobody will join me, I just can't do this. Like that excuse is no longer valid because there are people out there who need this. Like, there are so many people jumping on board every single day. Um, and I just thought this was really impressive to see. And then if you kind of take it down to the success club numbers, you can also see people are hitting big numbers. I feel like these numbers you see here are typically what you might see at the end of the month. You know, you've got Carrie Snyder already at 92 points. Janelle there, I just mentioned her. She's at 86, Megan Geis 54, Jen Guthrie 42. Like these are incredible month end numbers. Like, these numbers would rock the chart and it's April 20th. So I just think it's incredible. And so many people are leaning into the fact that people need our help and people are home and people really are valuing their health and making it more of a priority. And we've got a solution that can really help people meet those goals. You know, taking it another step further, we've got our success club. You guys, is it changing as I click these new images? This was like, now the Success Club 5 one's not opening. There we go. Can you see the Success Club 5? Okay, cool. Chris, I'm looking at you because you're on the top of my screen. So thank you. <laughs> All right. And then we've got two, I think two boards, right? Or do we have two of 10? We have two of 10. I did it out of order. Or is that the, yeah, I'm sorry. Let me go back. I was trying not to put, I should have just put this in a Canvas slide, but I didn't. Why can't I get this to change? Let's see. Isn't working. Let me see if I stop the screen share and then open it back up. Let's see if that helps. If that helps. No, like it's my iMessenger thing. It's not opening the images. All right. Well, I'm not going to waste time on that. My point is 
if you have time, go look in the Dream Team Coach page. Mal put all the, all the leaderboards in there. It's full. Shout out your coaches. Shout out people you know, your friends, your pod mates, people who are doing the Olympics group with you, whatever it is, um, because it's really impressive to see so many people hitting the boards. And it's like, I can't imagine. Like, if I already think when I looked at my numbers on Thursday for just my team, I was like, I feel like we could set a record this month. Like, a record of all the years combined, I actually feel like at this rate, the rate we're going, we could set records this month. And every one of you can set your own record too. So don't, don't discount that possibility. But I want to move on because we have a very special guest today. And her name is Janelle. And you see her on the leaderboards every, gosh, topping it every week lately. And not long ago, um, someone said to me, they're like, wow, it is so cool that Janelle just came out of nowhere and is crushing it. And I got so defensive and I was like, no, she did not come out of nowhere. That girl has been working her butt off for the last few months, years, and you're just now seeing that her work is all coming together. So yes, you now see her topping every single chart and it's incredible and she's busting her ass but she is doing that as a compound effect of everything that she's been doing and I had the honor of being able to hang out with her and some of her girls at summit last year and in July you know she was a diamond coach and all the girls there were emerald coaches but the one thing that you would have seen with all of them is they had passion and pride for the company for their team for the products for the oh, results wow. You can go get lunch for the results that they were getting and they just didn't stop they went all in and have been busting it and churning it and now you're seeing the diamonds pop the star diamonds pop and everything coming out but what you didn't see behind the scenes for the last months years was all the work that they put in so before you ever think that someone's an overnight success i think it's very important to understand all of the hard work that goes into it before you get to the point where you're actually seeing them topping the charts. But without that, we'll stop there. I want to now can go ahead and unmute yourself. I'll let you tell your story. I can give my side. Um, but I want you to now just to take a minute for those who just now see you popping out of nowhere and are like, who's this girl? Give everybody a little bit of background of where you came from and how you got started with this and kind of where you were then and how you got to where you are now. Alrighty, hello everybody. Um, so I feel like my story has multiple layers. So I will try to go through very quickly. I went to college, I have an early childhood education degree. I'm certified for PA, got a job right out of college. It was my dream job since I was in second grade. And within that first year, I was already burned out. It was not meant for me. So I went back to what I was comfortable with, which was bartending and waitressing, and I stuck with that. I was traveling with my husband at the time with his job. I was 20 weeks pregnant, I was waitressing, and I'm still very lost about who I am and what my passion, what was I meant to do on this earth. And so my story is a little different because I'm very in tune with myself, and there was something one day just like slapped me that says, you need a coach never followed a coach didn't i knew of beachbody didn't know anything about the business and i reached out to the first person from my hometown that i knew was a coach and told her to sign me up without asking any other questions so from there within the first week i realized what this opportunity had i saw the potential when i saw my upline and i was 20 weeks pregnant i was working five six times a week pulling double shifts my husband was working 70 80 hours I was traveling with him. I was planning a wedding. I had no family or friends near me. And I realized very quickly that I would have to give my baby girl up, my first baby up to a complete stranger. And that was not okay with me. And so every single day I visioned me in my black suit, going to work, giving my baby off to a stranger and knowing that I'm getting paid by somebody else's thinking what my worth is through waitressing. And that drove me day in and day out in my business. I literally worked every single minute that I had. I won't lie, I put a lot of time and like, and so do into this business. I sacrificed a lot of sleep. I went to bed late, I woke up early, but I can tell you, I didn't have to hand her back. 
I was able to replace my waitressing income and stay home with my baby. Now, my husband had a very good job and with the traveling gig, all the expenses pretty much were paid for with living. And so I pretty much left my business as being comfortable because I am independent and I like my own money. And so I pretty much was content. And I, re I didn't realize that at the time until I saw what happened in 2019. And our five year plan one day just went out the door when he got laid off. And I realized that it was my turn to step up and I had this business in my hands and I could do big things for my family. And so I dove in even deeper in 2019. And really, it, like Megan mentioned before, it is consistency. If I can tell you there's one secret ingredient into this business, it is being consistent day in and day out with your business activity tracker, with showing up on social media, and even with your own fitness journey. What I tell my ladies all the time is like, guys, when it comes to your fitness journey, you see a trans, you see your transformation is because you're being consistent. So what, what if you did that with your business? You're going to only go further. That's how you have to look at it. So anyways, there was so much consistency behind it. And in 2020, I think what really hit me is that I hooked up with a phenomenal lady and she's my business, my success partner. And she basically told me, she said, you know, she's like, you need to take the blame for everything. Everything is your fault. She's like, with your business, until you take ownership of that, it's not going to go anywhere. And honestly, it's exactly what I needed. And from that day, it changed in a heartbeat. So I went from one star to six, six star in seven weeks. It just all happened at once. And because I needed that reality check, I needed someone to tell me that you can do what you want with this business, but it's up to you and you have to put the work in. So that's sort of my story. Like I said, there's multiple layers, but you have to have a why. Why are you in this business? And it can't be like, oh, I just want to make some money. I just want to do this. No, you have to dig deeper and you have to find an emotional why that's going to drive you day in and day out because like any job, we don't always want to show up, but you have to. Yes, because it is a job. I think that's something we have to realize. And if you treat it like a job, then it pays you like a job. And if you treat it as a thing, like you maybe kind of sort of will do if you kind of end up with time down the road, then it will probably pay you in that same manner. So I love that you shared it that way. Um, when Janelle spoke, if you guys, we did that Dream Team Mini Summit a couple weeks ago. And I kept getting questions then from people asking me to expand on the little pieces that she shared during that little 15 minute segment. So if you guys have other questions, I have a couple that people have already shared with me that I'm going to, you know, kind of go through with you. If you have something specific um, on your mind, feel free to drop it in the comments and we'll go through those as we go. Um, but one thing that kind of came up that I feel like what she was so good and bold about was I don't work for free. Um, it was something that I think a lot of us can kind of get into that, like, but I just want to help people, but I don't work for free. So that was something that Janelle shared in, in one of the many little flips of that she made, flip the switch that she did. So if you could expand upon that a little bit, Janelle, maybe like how things were when maybe people, you were obviously doing things for free, or you were letting people in your groups without making that commitment and how you approach them confidently to be able to let them know obviously in a way that didn't scare them off that they still wanted to be a part of your group um just how you communicated that with them and then you know what impact that had on your business going forward okay so with challenge groups i think i personally had a lot of trial and error to try to find what works best for me what works best for my girls what i truly enjoy and it's not getting boring uh, because if you're bored with your own challenge group they sure are. So I'm constantly thinking, what can I do better? How can I change it? And so it was this past winter, I realized it's just like, okay, I need to do something different, but I want to go all in with like my coaching. I want to be the best coach possible. And I'm going to do, I'm going to bring value to them every single day because I wasn't, I, I will admit it. I feel like I was sort of a lousy coach. I was unorganized. I didn't have a system. And so I was sort of getting like, you know, forgetting people, unfortunately, um, it is what it is, but I realized I wouldn't be the best coach. What can I do to level up as a coach? And what can I do for my clients to help them go further? And I realized that, you know, they got their challenge pack and then they were set and then 
they weren't continuing products. And then they pretty much fell off after that first month, right? They got that excitement. They got their challenge pack. They got their products. They were so excited. And then about 30 days in, all of a sudden, it just sort of like went downhill again. And I'm thinking, okay, well, I know if I'm going to put all this time and energy in it, I, I want to be paid for. I need to compensate it for that. But I also know that if people are willing to invest in themselves, they are going to show up. Why would someone purchase something and then just sit on the sidelines and not do anything? So I realized that while, yes, it's a win-win, I'm getting compensated, but it's keeping them also in line with their fitness goal because they're making that investment. But as their coach, I have to show them the value to make that investment. And so while at the time I have this big, um, it used to be my boot camp, and now it's my announcement page. So I had all of like my clients in there and I'm just like, okay, before they make the investment, I need to prove to them that I'm going to bring value to them. So I took my huge group, which is now my announcement page, and that month, I think it was the month of November, I treated it like the boot camp that I was planning on doing for December. So they got the taste in November. So then when that came for December, I said, if you want to be in my December boot camp, it's going to be separate. This is now my announcement page. So you guys can obviously stay in here. There are some resources. But if you want to be in my December boot camp, you have to make a purchase of your choice. So I allow them to make a purchase, whether it's energized, whether it's um, the early access to the programs, whatever it may be. And it has worked in my benefit because the ladies are sharing, oh, I got these beach bars. Oh, I'm drinking Shaco. I'm drinking energized. And now it's sparking interest amongst the others. So now they're all trying different products and sharing it within my groups. Um, what I did for that that trial run was I was thinking, okay, I really honestly need to show up every single day in that boot camp and bring some kind of value, whatever it may be, whether I'm just going live and I'm pouring my energy into them, whether I'm sharing a meal plan, recipes, tips and tricks, you know, talking about my own fitness journey and the hoops and loops that I went through, um, giving shout outs of my ladies that are showing up, you know, sharing some, something motivational, anything every single day i made sure that they are getting something from me and so come december i told them a heads up hey if you want to be in this group you have to make a purchase so once they did that they got into the group in december it sort of has honestly they fell in love and it just continues to build and build like my current boot camp of paying customers are over 200 and so it just continues to build every single because they love the community and what you need to do, I think also is key while yes, coaches, it's great to like show up in your boot camps, but you need your, also your clients to show up because clients love clients showing up. They, they know coaches are going to show up, but they want to see other clients showing up. So just cheering them on constantly and loving when they do show up, just saying, oh my goodness, I love seeing your face or even sending them a private message. Thank you so much for showing up because you are inspiring others. Like you're a part of this puzzle. I hope you know that. That also gives them that boost to continue to show up and it makes them feel good. So that community, that sense of it continues to build and grow for me. Now, do you still use that announcements page for new things? And then like, are you creating a new boot camp each month? Yes. So that announcement page has worked well because let's just say something, someone is, wasn't able to do like this month's boot camp. Every single boot camp that I have coming up, I start announcing about like halfway through the month. So they know, oh, I can get in May's boot camp or whatever it may be. I can get in the upcoming boot camp. This is what I have to do. And then of course I do the announcements, um, you know, with new products or new launches and stuff like that as well. And I have different groups. I run a month to month and I do, I open a whole new group up for that. So it's brand new every time it's fresh energy, fresh page, all of it. So you're running like a new calendar month. So like May 1st, yes. you start a new group and then you promote it the two weeks leading up to it. Yes, correct. Within my announcement page. Now, a little off topic, but obviously you're doing this all on Facebook. Do you plan to make the switch to BOD groups then? Honestly, I haven't looked at bot groups and my thing is my Facebook groups are working really well right now. So I might as well not recreate, you know, create the wheel. So I'm going to continue until 
it dies out. Okay, cool. Sorry. Um, it got me off track. <laughs> Guys. Um, someone had asked a question. Does anyone about just kind of with that whole switch, does anybody get upset when you made the change? I mean, I feel like people, some people could always get upset, but you know, I tried this once. They got so upset because things were changing and felt like they got kicked to the curb. So do you find no. that people, like when you were like, okay, in this, Colton, please, in this announcement page, to move on to this group, you're going to have to make a purchase. You know, was that a video? Was that a post? And then like, what kind of feedback did you get when you did it? Yeah, that I went live and I talked about it, but I also told them. And so they saw my point of view. I'm like, guys, this is what I'm doing day in and day out. Like, I also need to be compensated for that, which people understand if you're just very open to them, I think they're more understanding about it because they don't always know what I do behind the scenes. And it's just like, this is what I'm doing. So, you know, I have to be compensated for it. They were completely fine with it. I had no negative feedback, at least in my face. <laughs> I think in general, like people can always have negative feedback. Um, you know, I've done everything from saying you must buy Shakeology to get in my group to anybody who wants to come in and have fun with me can just come and be a part of it. And obviously, I think, you know, there's two ways to look at it. One, I find that some people join in and if they don't right away, like you're saying, they get that FOMO, they see other people sharing other products and then they just get more interested. Um, so I'd like mm -hmm. that it's not, you have to buy a challenge pack, but just hold on. But that you have to buy something, you know, buy something to participate because this is my job. And I feel like a live video would probably portray that the mm -hmm. best way so that people are understand like your heart and your purpose and your passion, where if you were to try to send an email or you're like send it in text, I feel like it kind of get a little bit misconstrued there. So. That's good. Right. That's and sharing, sharing also that like when you make the investment, you're not going to sit on the sideline. I think that also allows people to realize, yeah, you're right. Like I wouldn't make the investment to be in your boot camp and then not do anything with it. This would hold me to the next level of commitment. So is it every month then in this announcements page, it's like, okay, here's the, the post. If you want in May's group, make a purchase comment here or is it like are you just kind of adding people as you convert like have conversations with them for for the announcement page that's like where all of my clients are so like all of my clients that i've ever had are in that group and then like anybody who's going to want in may will have to go comment under a specific post in that group yeah. to get into may and are they yeah. saying what they bought yes i check too i check my volume and everything to make sure that they engage because I do have people that try to get in and then I message them and let them know. <laughs> All right, cool. So another question, obviously from a volume standpoint, you're bringing on a lot of people. Like your numbers are crushing it, your volume's crushing it, your SE points are crushing it. What is your general process when you're bringing in a new person into your bootcamp? What are you doing to get them started right? To get them started right? Um, I have like a welcome email. I have a few questions there asking about like their time frame. Um, what kind of goals are working towards like what style of exercising they enjoy and so I can help them find a program for them um, They also have a welcome like I do like a welcome video within my boot camp that they can watch It goes over everything how I operate the boot camps what they expect from me what I expect from them um, Where to find the information within the unit tabs the album tabs the announcement tabs so that way they're not completely lost with all the information in my boot camps and then I check in with them via email every single Monday and Friday. And they know all of this prior to joining me. Like they know what they get from me as their coach. They're not surprised by anything. So you're using the email then to communicate? Yes, absolutely. Um, and then someone I know Kiana answered there. The program, I think this is important too. Like I feel like, and I did this for the first time, I didn't actually start a new group for 10 rounds. I just left all my people in my one boot camp because I feel like it creates a little bit of that FOMO, right? Like people are seeing what you're doing. Um, and that was something like, you're not running a separate group for 10 rounds and this and that, it's all in one, right? And they yeah. just kind of do what they want. Yeah. Um, something else that kind of, another question I got was about creating the FOMO and I will say I'll drop her IG handle here. Someone else asked if you're using Facebook or IG, it's 
So I mean, you can kind of talk on that a little bit more. That was one question, Facebook or IG. I'll put our handle in here. Um, but the, and then the other thing was, how are you creating the FOMO? So that's something I'll put her handle because if you go watch her stories, you're like, I swear, I said this whenever she spoke to on something else. I was watching her stories. I was like, I want to be in your boot camp too. Like she makes them so fun. And I think it's, we're doing the work. It's that extra step to document what's going on behind the scenes and giving them enough information so that they're kind of want to, they want people who are curious, right? Like they want to be a part of it. So where are you hanging out? Facebook, Instagram, and what do you, and then the other part is, you know, what are you specifically sharing that's getting people so like curious and interested in doing what you're doing? Okay. So yeah, guys, if you do, I'm more on Instagram than Facebook with my stories. Um, and if you do watch them, you're going to understand, but I do a lot of shout outs and I just hype it up. So Anytime someone joins me, I ask usually if I can like shout them out in my stories because I'm so excited for them. So then I throw up their picture and I say, oh, you know, so-and-so isn't joining me in my next boot camp. She's ready, you know, to crush her goals. So they see people are joining me. It's not just a name popping up. They see the face, right? Because to me, how I think about it is like, oh, you can type anybody's name up in that list of yours. That's just me though. But so having their face up there, they see that they're joining my boot camps. People want to be a part of something. That's just our, like, that's just what we want. So constantly throwing them up there. I'm also getting transformation photos pretty much every single day for my ladies. Again, because they made the investment within themselves. My ladies are getting results like no other. I get them pretty much on a daily from someone. So I'm constantly doing my client win that I call it. Um, with a transformation photo. I also am, let me see what else I do. The results, another thing is because I do check in with them the via email, if they say some kind of little thing like, oh my goodness, I am so thankful for your community, your coaching, like my confidence has gone up so much since joining guys. I will like take that little clip and I will share that in my stories because they're seeing it from my clients, right? While it's great to hear me saying how phenomenal my camps are, they want to hear my clients saying it. So anytime I get like love messages like that, I'm also putting that into my stories as well. So a lot of it is basically shouting out my ladies joining me, shouting out their results, shouting out their like non-scale victories, and then any love messages, I call them, that I get from my ladies about my camps. Um, sometimes in the beginning of the camp, I will show the amount of people that have committed to it. So they're like, oh wow, like X amount of people are doing this boot camp with her. Um, so those are the kind of things that I hype up within my camp. And then of course, you know, always the fun, upbeat music gets people going that I add to it. and that's pretty much it. And then behind the scenes, what they see is like when I upload some meal plans and recipes, I will share that as well. So they can get a taste of what I am uploading within my groups. Yeah. From my, I mean, like when I was, was watching and really kind of taking note of what Janelle was doing to me, it's all the things that you're probably doing anyways. She's taking the extra step to share it now on her story. So when someone sends you a message saying, thank you, saying your post inspired me today, saying I'm all in. Like that, I think you had that the other day. All it said was I'm ready. Like that was it. It was like a screenshot of somebody that said I'm ready. But imagine the person who's watching your stories, who's been sitting there thinking, I want to approach her. I don't know how, like you've got all these hesitations, that simple I'm ready. And I was like, oh my gosh, someone said that to me. So like I went back and I was like, I'm doing that too. And like, I have just found like, it's a lot of the stuff we're doing. It's the conversations we're having. The simplest little message from someone that says, I wore jeans for the first time today and I could button them. That mm -hmm. simple message that someone shares in your group, that is something that to me, like that's what I'm seeing her post in her stories. And I know it's like, maybe it sounds simple if you hear her, like, I'm sharing the transformations. I'm sharing this. Honestly, follow her stories for three days and you'll see exactly what she's talking about. Like it's a constant hype up and I have found that yes she's doing this but because she's created this consistent process her coaches do it too so it's it's a simple duplication like we're always like how do we get our coaches to then duplicate what we're doing well when it's that simple it's like okay just share the things that you're seeing the things that you're doing that like in an easy way um is doing a post in your challenge group and saying 
you know, what's one thing you've noticed since you started, you know, you joined our group? Like if you're not, if you're like, well, people just aren't knocking down my door telling me how great I am or telling me how wonderful this is, then make a post. Um, if you're mm -hmm. in a group with, you know, your upline or a couple other coaches and you're running it together, somebody can comment in that group. And if they're not your person, you can still share it, right? Like it doesn't have to be like, I personally recruited that person and got them those results. Like lean into the community that you already have and a post that says, let's share your non-scale victories. Um, I did one in my challenge group this morning asking them for updated progress pictures. I haven't got any for a while and I know that like people are coming up on, you know, 10 rounds and I know a lot of people are going to be starting bar blend as it comes out with this week, 24th. Um, so I'm like, I know people are kind of in that mode where they're getting ready to switch. So I kind of just threw it out there. Like we need some updated pictures and I want us, I want them to take them. That's going to hold them accountable, but I also want to share them because being able to showcase those results as you get ready to launch your next group, um, that just gives you the leverage to share that, you know, you're not just talking it, you're saying it, but people are coming along. Um, there was a question up here, what's shared in the announcement group, which I feel like you kind of hit on that. Do you share your own workout posts in, do you share your own workout posts and stuff with the paid group then? So I guess, I guess like reading that through, I think it's in the announcements group, it's kind of, this is what I got, this is what's coming on, but you're giving all your attention into your actual boot camp. Is that accurate? Yeah, the, yeah. My uh, my announcement page pretty much has like any um, launches coming out, my new boot camps coming out, how to get in them, and then I do share my girls' transformations in there because it sparks interest. So like, oh, well, they are getting transformations when they join her boot camp. So maybe I want to commit next month. And I'm thinking too, like if you're somebody who maybe you have fallen victim to letting every person in your group leverage bot groups coming out like leverage the switch. Like if you're, if you've got this Facebook group and you've got everyone under the sun that's in there, you know, I, and actually I think for bod groups, I feel like it's going to be like my challenge tracker app where you have to have a beach body on demand account, like to get, like, I think you're going to, it's going to be linked to that. Right. So leverage the change. Like if you find yourself stuck in this rut of, you know, not being able to be bold and not being able to be confident in it, you know, leverage the change and use that as the opportunity to be like, we're switching over um, and kind of what she was saying, like your Facebook group can still be your announcement page, right? Like you've got all these people in a page, you know, we have our TBD 411 page where things are always shared. You can still leverage what you've created if you have maybe like a sale group you've ran before, or if you have you know, like the prep groups we've ran when there's upcoming launches or something like that, you can leverage what you have but if you need, like, use this as a clean cut to move to bod groups and use that as a way to be, you know, confident in, in requiring people to, you know, make a purchase. But on that whole confidence, I think, like, the one thing that stands out to me is you're so confident. Like, when I talk to you, you're like, these programs work, my girls get results, my team kicks ass. Like, you're so, like, this is just how it is. Has it always been like that? Um, and is there something that you did, a book you read, a process that you implemented, like morning routine? Is there something that you did that helped you get to this confidence stage? And I think it's like, you know, people who like, well, she's, that's her. I thought my personality. So how, kind of how you got to this point where you're just kicking ass and taking names. So I was not always confident. <laughs> I was not at all. Um, it took me going all in with my own fitness journey to build that confidence and doing personal development every single day. So with those tasks that we should be doing anyways as a coach, that's what built my confidence up. There was honestly no book out there that flipped the switch or anything like that. It was just day in and day out focusing on my fitness journey and doing personal development. Um, personal development, was a lot. I love the channel Be Inspired. I like the militant, militant style of development, the ones, you know, where the guys are yelling at you. That's my jam. Um, <laughs> so that's pretty much what helped me. And then with my own um, fitness journey, just knowing that I am trying all that I can possibly do with this switch of trying to be the best coach possible gave me the confidence. And then seeing my lady show up and get the results 
and truly loving the community just continues to build that confidence within my coaching ability. I love it. And honestly, guys, I don't think anyone can disagree that when you're on it with your fitness, you're more confident in everything else. You're probably more confident with your significant other. You're more happy and patient with your kids. You are more confident in what this business has to offer. And I said it to my husband the other day. I was like, I feel like it sounds bad saying it, but our bodies are our business. I'm not saying you have to have a six pack or you have to have um, whatever it is that you think you may have to have, but your body should be dead. And whatever way you can showcase that what we have works, it works mentally, it works physically, it works financially. If you can show it every little bit, then that's going to, it's going to ripple into every other area of your life. So if you look, you can see Janelle's transformation through, I mean, I feel like it's easiest to go ahead and look on Instagram because you can see pictures. She is confidently sharing her transformation like none other. Like it is out there from, you know, way back when to now, you know, postpartum to now. And, you know, you don't have to have a postpartum change to do it. You know, you don't have to have, you know, whatever. I mean, I always say like, I, I actually weigh more now than I did when I was coaching. I weigh a good 10 pounds more than the day I signed up as a coach. But that doesn't mean you can't showcase what these programs and products do. And it's that confidently sharing because now when you, when you feel good, then you could go and tell anybody that they should be doing this, that they should be being part of your group and sharing in the Shakeology and the Energize, whatever it is, because of how it makes you feel. So, oh, Katie, I dropped it in um, a little bit higher up her Instagram. I think, where was it? Fit Spiritual Yanks. I think if you type your name in, it actually comes in. Because I feel like I never type that part in, right? Whenever... I go to like tag you in something, um, but your personal journey and the way that you can showcase what this does for you, I think about anything else is the greatest thing to be able to show people what we have now kind of flipping it from a business standpoint, obviously you're recruiting, you're showing people, you're sharing everything in your stories. You've got everybody who's like, okay, I want a little piece of what she's having now from a business standpoint, like I said, you know, you are a diamond at summit last year with a tribe. I mean, I think you were rolled like 11 deep everywhere you guys went. So there was a group, but you were still a diamond, not like just a diamond, but you were a diamond coach. You had these girls there. And in the beginning of 2020, you were a one star diamond. And oh wait, you were one star last year. No, no, I might be wrong. There. Yeah, somewhere on there. Um, but you were one star at the beginning of 2020. Yes, because you went to New Leader Conference. You were one star there, and then all of a sudden it's six. So what are you doing to bring on these new coaches? Like what, what has been, you know, did you flip something from a recruiting standpoint in talking about the business? How are you sharing the business to, to take it from where you were, you know, I don't know if you want to say from where you were at summit last year, where you were in January. Uh, I mean, I feel like you could go so different levels with this. Um, but just to give people a little bit of, you know, what it was for you that helped you really amp up your recruiting. So honestly, all of my recruiting comes from my boot camps, 100%. They get the transformations, they fall in love with the community, they see they're posting in there, they're building that confidence. They see what I do on social media, and then it's just that simple switch of, well, why can't I do that? So honestly, having a killer boot camps, I, that's where all of my recruitment has come from the last few months was my clients. I'm sorry, there's nothing special about that. <laughs> you know what? But that's something we can all do because there's a couple people who I know will say, oh, I can recruit to the business. I could, that's easy. But most people are going to say, I was changed by the products. And it's easy to recruit to my challenge groups because the products are great, but it's harder or I hesitate more when I'm trying to recruit to the business because it's like, well, how do you say this? And I feel like that's simpler, right? Because we can all do that. We all have, I feel like we're all easier. And if someone, you know, you can always tell me if you feel the opposite. But I think it's easier to invite people to join this community and have fun with our home fitness and our nutrition and do all these things. And if they're loving that and they'll see, you know, this is your job. And I think the, the important thing is publicly, obviously you can, you know, hype up your challenge groups, get them results. I think it's, you know, social on social, you have to make sure you're letting people know that this is a job, that you do have a job, that this is what you do for a living. You know, I'll never forget someone said to me once I shared, I shared something about paying off my student loans after I started coaching and a girl that we had babysitting for us at the time. She was like, 
you made money from those challenge groups? I thought you just did that to be nice. And I was like, no, I didn't pay you to watch my children so that I could just go home and be nice. That's cute. But it was my fault because I clearly wasn't portraying it in a way that allowed people to know that this was not my job, that I made a business off of this and I didn't go pay off my student loans because I hit the lottery one day, I worked for it. So that's the other side, like go rock your boot camps, get them results, but make sure people understand that as a coach, this is your job, whether it paid, you know, $10 towards a movie you rented for, you know, date night in, or you paid off your student loans, whatever it is, sharing all those little things. And I actually think the smaller scale things are more relatable anyways, but sharing those things and making sure then people too, they know they can be a part of it with you. Like, it's kind of like, okay, like you've got these results, we've got this community, but then there's this business side. And again, uh, take a scroll and don't hear, I'll go caveat. I'm gonna tell you to go look at Janelle's Facebook or Instagram, but don't compare yourself. I just want you to read it and you can, you can just read five or six posts to get a gist of what she's talking about, but you'll see common things. And she'll talk about coaching in a subtle way. It's not a come join my team. I don't even, I don't, I feel like I don't see that from you necessarily, but she talks about the business. She talks about her girls getting these results. She talks about what it's doing. And then your curiosity is going to take you to the next step. If you're following her and you don't know, it's like, well, well what, what do you do? And it kind of gets that curiosity to the next level. Oh, I'm getting shot at. Okay. Um, does anyone have any other questions? Is there anything else? Oh my gosh, Ashley, I love that. I gained weight last week and shared it. I had so much love. I made $300 sale from it. Seriously, people love to see you fail. Like some of my best posts have honestly been where I've been like super ripped after a program to like just coming off vacation. And I'll be like, I, I, I failed here. I mean, like, I mean, I had a lot of fun, so I wouldn't say I failed, but I'm not, I don't look like that anymore. But when you can, you can, like I'll proudly share when, when the abs are there. But when I share when they're hidden behind the chocolate cake, people like that so much more because that's relatable. So it's, you know, sharing the ends, like sharing all the pieces of the puzzle so that people really understand you're a person and the results that you have are there because of your, you know, living your life and enjoying it at the process. Um, all the love for you, Janelle. I don't see any other questions. I feel like I, I feel like we got them all. Some of them, like you already, you answered through what you were talking about. I don't think there was anything else in there. Oh, my husband's calling me. But all right. So thank you guys so much, Janelle. Thank you for sharing your heart. Like I said, look at her stuff, but don't compare yourself. Allow it to be inspiration that you can unapologetically show up as you are. You mm -hmm. can keep setting the bar higher and higher every month as you set new goals and you reach them and you achieve them and move on. That's exactly what she's done. I know I have been incredibly inspired watching her. It's given me so much like, like light and fire under me. And I tell her that every day. I'm like, I love it. Like I love watching her excel. I don't compare myself to her. I am not trying to be her, but I'll be damned if I will watch it and not let it inspire me to do more. Like there are people out there who need it. There are people out there who are craving this business, this community, having something that they can do at home. And it's our job to make sure that they know that they can come to us to get it. So thank you, Janelle, for giving us your time today. I appreciate it. I love you. I am so proud of everything that you've done. And I will get this recording up for everyone else and you guys can share it with your teams. But thanks for getting on today, guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.